Greetings, it is I, Tantus Naravan Jacobin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. It is time to continue our discussion on D20 Modern, the modern take on the third edition of Dungeons and Dragons. Where we left off, last left off, we were talking about combat. Let's talk about some more rules and actions you can take in combat, a lot of the special attacks you can take. The aid another. This means I'm trying to help out an ally when in combat. If I have a friend who's engaged in melee attack against an opponent, then I am also engaged in melee attack against them. I can attempt to aid them, basically help them out, either attacking or defending. I would make an attack against defense of 10, and should I be successful, I can grant either my ally plus 2 to their next attack against this opponent, or... On my, that opponent's turn, I can grant my ally plus two defense against them. So effectively, I can either grant them plus two to one attack or plus two defense against a turn of attacks against them. Both are very good choices for helping and aiding my ally. Now let's break down firearms a little more because there are some special rules about firearms. Now most firearms are handled in a single shot, one blast. There are feats that and abilities that grant you other ways of making multiple attacks or enhancing these, but traditionally you're going to be thinking along the lines of that single attack that's going to be hitting an opponent. As long as you have proficiency, again you would need proper proficiencies to use the weapons properly, or to be taking the minus four. Now there are weapons that have auto fire. Auto fire is handled that it attacks an area rather than a single target. I choose a 10 by 10 area and I swap bullets into that area. Every creature, regardless of friend or foe within that 10 by 10 area has to make a reflex save DC 15. If they succeed at it, then they've managed to avoid the bullets. If they fail, they get hit by one of the shots that I've fired into there. And it would take damage from the bullet according to what normally the damage I would deal with the gun is. Now, I need at least 10 bullets in my gun in order to do this. Because it uses up 10 bullets exactly. Any less than that, and I can't do an auto fire. Now, this is different from something like a burst fire, which you need a feat to use. But that concentrates a number of shots into one person. This is spraying them over an area. There are some weapons you can get that only have auto fire. Now let's talk about grenades and explosives. Now explosives slash grenades come in two forms. They come in weapons that explode when you would throw them to an area, they would land in an area, that's the grenade type. Or they come in explosives that you have to place and we either have a fuse or a time that would go off at a certain point in time. Both of these explosives detonate and, and fill their an area with their damaging effect. Now thrown things like grenades are handled as a ranged attack. Each of them has a basic increment depending on the weapon you're using. The increment, if you throw it within one, you actually don't really need to make an attack roll. Beyond there, you have to make an attack roll against a certain square of AC 10. So basically, you are t attacking a certain square with it. Now, if you're just attacking, you're normally hitting. Each one has a bounce of about a D4. You roll a D4 and you kind of see kind of which direction it bounces a little bit in, where it settles before it detonates. If you should miss your normal target, you'd still roll that D4. You still would possibly roll that D4. You'd roll a D4 or a D8 or a D12, depending on your increment, to see how really what kind of direction it may bounce in and how far it would bounce in that direction. Effectively, you're trying to see how well it would scatter. Missing it means a lot more scatter and means it might bounce back in ways that you don't want it to. At a certain point in time, then of course it will detonate and fill the area that it detonates into with its explosion. Planted explosives need no attack roll, but when they do go off, they basically detonate in an area and those that are within the area get a reflex save, whatever DC is appropriate to the explosives for half of that damage, trying to avoid the explosion. Now there are thrown splash weapons. These things, you throw them and they break upon contact. Traditionally, you're trying to target a certain person with them and then you aim at their AC. If it successfully hits them, they get direct damage and everything within five feet gets splash damage. You can again also target a square with this, but that just means that that square and everything within five feet of it gets to splash damage directly. So you're just trying to splash the person with other. It's breaking on contact. If you should miss your attack, then you use the exact same scatter rules as you're using for the grenades to see how far off you're actually getting your splash attack. So you might hit allies or enemies different than the ones you wanted to, depending on how far you're getting in what direction it is, but you're splashing out of the way. Now let's talk about attacking objects, because that's something you might need to do. Now most objects, if they're just sitting there, if you're adjacent to it as a full round action, you can automatically hit it. If you're trying to ranged attack it, you can again full round action and you'd get plus five to hit it. You'd still have to roll to hit that. Most objects have an AC depending on its size and hardness and things like that. That is defined in the book, a general number of general objects that you can attack. 
If an object is being attended and held by someone, well, then it works differently. It's going to have an AC of five. It's going to have a, a defense of five plus whoever is holding its dexterity modifier plus their class bonus to defenses. So that'll determine what the object that's being held. If you attack an object that's being held or carried, well, then that target gets an attack of opportunity. You've provoked it from them. Now, objects have a number of statistics to them. First off, they have a hardness, which is a basic amount of damage they just subtract from any kind of attack you're dealing to them. So if it would have a hardness of five, it would take five less damage from whatever attack I'm doing. Objects, of course, have hit points. It's how much damage it can actually take over time. Objects get affected by energy damage differently. And you look at each energy damage and each one affects objects in a different, different way. Some of them affect it with full damage, other ones affect it with half damage, and this is before hardness applies, and even some even less than that. There are in fact some attacks which may not affect an object whatsoever. You would look at the attack and your GM would determine if the attack would even affect the object whatsoever. Now an object is immune to non-lethal damage and critical hits. Now, if you're doing some kind of ability that causes a saving throw against the object, if it's an unattended object, it gets no saving throw. It can't avoid whatever attack you're getting against it, any kind of reflex or fortitude-based one that would actually affect it, like an explosion. On the other hand, if it's being held or carried by a person, well, then the object itself would get the saves of the person that it is being attended by. Now, you can just try to break an object with a straight strength check, a straight bash into it. Each object has a DC that you'd have to create, uh, to meet or beat in order just to snap it over your knee or something like that. Granted, if you would damage an object at, a, at about half its health, it actually reduces the DC by a little bit in order to break it. So it becomes easier to break the more you damage it. Items can also be repaired. If you want to repair an object, you need about an hour and the proper tools. If you don't have the proper tools, you get minus five to your, your check to repair it, your skill check of repair. After that hour, you would make a skill, a repair skill check, DC 20, and if you succeed at that DC 20, you have successfully repaired the object by a little bit. You would heal it 2D6 hit points. And of course, every hour you could continue repeating this, rolling to see if you've successfully done some repairs on it, healing it 2D6 until the object is repaired. So that's it for today. I introduced you to, of course, aiding another. I talked a little bit about firearms with full auto. I talked about thrown weapons, and especially thrown grenades and thrown explosives or planted explosives, moving on to thrown splash weapons, and finally ending up, of course, with damaging objects, because sometimes you just want to smash a chair or something like that. In the next episode, I'm going to dive into some more special attacks you can do with bull rushes, overruns, trips, disarming, and of course, grappling. We'll see how far I get through all of those. But if you need questions, comments, anything you say, anything you think I left out, please leave in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe to support for the channel, the empire, the work I do. If you want to show some extra support, you can always check out my Patreon, link to the description below. But regardless, until the next time, I bid you farewell.